chapter 6, we're going to finish our Bible study up tonight. Well, it's not really what you call it now. Huge Bible study, but a few weeks, the Lord has been teaching, helping me to teach upon the whole arm of God. Um, now, we talked about the heaven of salvation last Wednesday night, and tonight, I'm not going to skip the sword of the Spirit, uh, but it kind of goes along with the heaven of salvation. The heaven of salvation is knowledge. The sword of the Spirit is, is wisdom. That's right. How many knows the difference between knowledge and wisdom? Knowledge is facts that you obtain. Wisdom is application of facts that you obtain. Did, did, did you get that? Amen. Knowledge is something you know. Wisdom is using something you know. Amen. Amen. So, and, and that's that's what the sword of the spirit is, the word of God. The Bible said, be not hearers only, but be doers of the word of God. So that is the sword of the spirit. If you really want to chop the enemy up, how many knows what Jesus used when he was in the battle with him in the wilderness? Word. The word of God. That's the sword of the spirit. And if you go back and research these armors of God, not many of them are offense. Most of them are defense. Amen. But the word of God is offense, the sword of the spirit. And so the Lord, the Lord don't want us always just taking stuff from the devil. Wow. He's kind of like them old southern parents used to be uh, in the south. It's where I grew up at. It's the only reason I know southern parents. But how many of you remember the old teaching is when they told your child go to school? Don't start nothing, son. Now, y'all finish it off. But don't you take that, maybe. Come on now. Y'all heard that before in the South. That's kind of like the Lord saying, don't you go out there and start under the devil. But when he comes playing his game, don't you take none of his junk, neither. Amen? Amen? And so now we know that we're born again. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal more. We don't fight with our fists. We fight with the weapons of our warfare are mighty through God to the pulling down the strongholds. Amen? Amen. But tonight, I want, to, I want to go ahead and end it up in verse number 18, saying, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. That's pretty much the, the, the end of the whole armor of God. So let's go to the Lord in prayer tonight as we break His bread. Father, we thank You for holy bread, God, that Your Word says that You are the bread of life. And God, if any man eat of this bread, he shall never hunger again, Lord. And we're thankful for the bread. God, we pray, Lord, for the anointing upon the bread, Lord, that you would just bless us to be able to rightly divide the word of truth, God, that we can, we can grow thereby, Lord. Not only let us drink of the milk of the word, but help us to eat of the meat of the word tonight. God, tonight i got a few scriptures that you don't talk a whole lot about this subject in your word, Lord. And I have a little bit of experience in this department. And I just pray tonight that you would anoint me to come down to people's level and not try to act like a preacher tonight. But just try to act like a person and be able to work with people on different levels. That they may be able to get to the place in their life where they can pray in the spirit. God, it's so easy when you take over. It's a whole lot easier to pray in you than it is to pray in our own self. And God, we just pray tonight for the abundance of my heart. My mouth will speak. My heart may be filled with love. And I'll give you praise and glory. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. For his great name. Well, I was going to give you some scriptures, but maybe I remember them by heart. I've been trying to keep. Some of them on my son's phone. It's easy to just take a picture of them and write them all down. But I believe I remember them in my head. We're talking about praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. I don't want to get too loud for you tonight because sometimes I can't even hear my own self. It's like it's still in a drum a little bit. It's supposed to get some stuff coming in this week, maybe help out with that. But the only reason I'm pretty much using a microphone because I tried it one Monday night in here without a microphone and you can't hear me online. And so when the phone's that far back, I'm trying to get it where it can hear online as well. Try to feed those. We're probably going to end up with that this Wednesday, though. Uh, so, But nevertheless, we'll try to continue our Sunday morning services streaming live. But we'll probably just go back to our normal Wednesday service without the Facebook and things. But it had been a blessing to have a tool to reach people. Pray always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Notice that that word spirit is capitalized there. That's right. I just want to talk to you tonight and give you what the word of God says and give you my experience in this department. I feel like that I'm not adequate enough to teach in this because I should be more experienced in this than I am. But I have had some experiences. I've had some experiences where... I felt like that I was dry. I 
felt like that I couldn't pray in the Spirit. And then there's been about times that I felt like Jesus was right at my feet. Some of y'all may can bear witness for that as well. Some of y'all yeah, may have felt man. like you've been in the presence of Almighty God. Then you was in the throne room of the Holy of Holies. Yeah. And then there's been times when you felt like you was here in the wilderness and couldn't feel God a million miles away. I want to use this analogy to try to help you understand about praying in the Spirit. Because so many, and I, I do, I, I'm not going to say this always means praying in the Holy Ghost, praying in tongues. I do feel like it's what he's talking about, but that doesn't mean that you can't pray in the Spirit without praying in tongues. Uh, I've been seeking the Lord on that. I've been trying to meditate upon that. Uh, but right here, I do believe he's talking about praying in tongues, praying in our prayer language. Uh, some people argue with the fact of, does everybody speak with tongues because of the Scripture in 1 Corinthians? But there's too many other scriptures that rule that out. And we do believe that, you know, that not everybody does have the gift of tongues, which yeah. people stand up in church and give an a, a interpretation or give a message in tongues. Not everyone has that gift. But as far as a prayer language, every, every believer, I will say, has that gift. But every believer is, can have that gift. Uh, can, matter of fact, Mark 16, 17, and 18, 18 said, These signs shall follow them that believe. How many believe in Jesus Christ? Amen. Amen. These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. Somebody say, They shall. They shall. That's what his word said. They shall speak with new tongues. This is a prophecy that the Bible said out of our belly shall flow rivers of living waters. That Isaiah prophesied that when the Holy Ghost would come, Jesus said this was signifying the Holy Ghost. In the book of Acts chapter 2, when they was all gathered in the upper room, 120 believers were gathered in one mind, in one accord, and the Spirit of God came down like a rushing mighty wind and filled all the believers. Somebody say, filled them all. Filled them all. 120 of them spoke with tongues. Amen. Now, if it was not for everyone, I don't believe he would have gave it to all 120 of them. That is a key phrase in the word of God. The Bible said, let every word be established by the mouth of two or three witnesses. You yeah. can go to Acts chapter 10, verse 44. You can see again, when the pouring out of the Holy Ghost was given, they spake with tongues. You can go to Acts chapter 19, when the Holy Ghost was given to the Gentiles, they spake with tongues. And so that's why we as Pentecostals believe when you get baptized in the Holy Ghost, you will speak with tongues. But I do not want you to get so much caught up in the tongues because there's a lot of people who have the tongues that don't have the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Oh, you got quiet then. I see a lot of tongues and a lot of foolishness. There's no power, no holiness, no eager, no, 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 no hunger for the Word of God. And so don't rush into trying to receive the tongue. Make sure you focus upon the power. I'm not going to say to the people that are taken into back rooms and jibber-jabber their jaws, I'm not going to say God's going to send them to hell. I'm not going to say that because their hearts are right. They want to receive the Holy Ghost. But I don't see no scripture that backs that up of taking you to it. Matter of fact, these 120 believers that were gathered in the upper room were not there to have their jaws gibbered back and forth. They were seeking, as Jesus told them, to tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. They were not looking for tongues. They were looking for Jesus. And when you look for Jesus, tongues will come. But I, I, I'm not saying this to condemn you. I was not raised in a Pentecostal church. I'm, I'm not asking you. You know, I, there's a lot of Baptist people here that came from Baptist churches. And they say, why in the world they come to Assembly of God Church? I'll tell you why I feel like it is because I don't preach denominations. I open up my Bible and you can't deny the fact that it's right there in your face. That's the way you convert people. You don't try to argue, beat them over the head, just show them in the Word of God. Now, if they don't believe the Word of God, there's no hope for them. Amen. There's no need me trying to argue Amen. with them because if God can't convince them, I sure can. Amen. Amen. But I don't want you to deal tonight if you say, well, I'm kind of sketchy about all that. I don't know if I believe in all that. Uh, Jude chapter 1 verse 20 says, but ye beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. That's right. Wow. These are tongues. When the, when the Holy Ghost was poured out at Pentecost, they all spake with tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now you'll hear a lot of people 
quote that scripture and quote it all wrong. And that's why it's a lot of people that don't pray in the Holy Ghost because they're waiting on the Spirit to give the utterance. That's not what it said. The Word said the Spirit gave them utterance. That's right. And so when I start off tonight giving you an analogy of preaching tonight, when I begin to get into the pulpit, there is a level of preaching that I love. That's why I preach so long. A lot of people want to know why I'm so long with it. Because when I come, I don't have a, a three-point sermon. Sometimes I have points. But I'm not here just to give you an ex aegis or whatever that word is of three points and teach you a lesson. I'm here to feel the power of God. That's how I flow. I can't preach without His power. That's but right. I want to tell you tonight, just the way of praying in the Spirit is the same way with preaching in the Spirit. I've got to start off in my own self by faith. Because the That's Bible right. said, without faith, it's impossible to please Him. For he that cometh to God must first believe yeah. that He is and that He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. I wish I had a button that when I came to the pulpit, I could automatically
You know, one of, some of us say, why in the world did God use tongues for evidence? Why didn't he use shout? I could shout. The reason I believe he used tongues because the Bible said that's the only part of the body no man can tame. That's right. Amen. And the scripture said, the book of James right. said, Amen. the tongue is a deadly poison. It's a poison that's asked. It's full of deadly poison. No man can tame. And so many times God works with our tongue and he moves in. He says, if you'll yield me my tongue, I'll speak the mysteries of God. Praise God. Verse number 15. What is it then? I will pray with the spirit and, and we'll pray with the understanding also. I will sing with the spirit and I will sing with the understanding also. Now, he's, he's not capitalized that. I don't know if y'all caught on to that. But when the uppercase spirit comes inside of our spirit, we become one inside That's right. of us. Amen. That's where it gets tricky in our minds. I'm coming down to a human level. I'm not preaching as a preacher. I'm preaching to like the thoughts that go through your mind, they go through mine as well. Well, is that God? Well, where'd that thought come from? How many has ever had God to prick you to do something and you thought, hmm? I don't know if that was the Lord or not. Uh -huh. Why? Because his spirit, your spirit, become one now. He lives. Ain't that what he said? You are the temple of the Holy Ghost. He dwells inside of you now. That's and right. so now when he speaks, it sounds like you. That's right. It doesn't make any sense at all. Yeah. Amen. And so a lot of times, you know, uh, I'm the same way. I feel for my wife. Why? Because my wife's around me all the time. And so when she comes to get a word from God, she's like, well, that's just my husband. The same way with me when I hear myself preach. I'm like, well, I hear myself talk all the time. And you know, sometimes I me and my wife, we want to go listen to another preacher and get fed because we think that the other preacher's got the answer. But the truth of the matter is it's not me and it's not them. It's greater is he that is in us and he that is in this world. Because God can use me just like you use somebody else on the earth. And when we get that revelation that it's God inside of us, it's not we ourselves. That's what Paul came to the conclusion. I will pray with the Spirit. A lot of people say, you know, that when we talk about every time a uh, biblical, they, they asked uh, Smith Wigglesworth one time, they asked him, they said, Brother Smith, do you believe you can be baptized in the Holy Ghost and not speak with tongues? He said, I'm not going to say you cannot be baptized in the Holy Ghost and not speak with tongues, but I will say this, you will not have a biblical baptism. And they, they began to argue and said, well, the Apostle Paul never spoke in tongues when he got baptized with the Holy Ghost. He said, you turn over the book of Corinthians, and Paul said, I spake with tongues more than them all. So he spake with tongues. So, you know, to be filled with the Spirit, to be overflowing in the Spirit, you will pray in the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Amen. My, my thing is, I've had some wonderful experiences, and I'm, I'm going to go back to some of those, because maybe they'll help you out. Tongues were the hardest things for me to even listen to a Pentecostal church. As I got saved, I didn't know that names meant anything on church. I just thought that was what somebody wanted to name. Right. Matter of fact, the church that I went to a handful of times in Mississippi was named after our road that we lived on, like uh, Buford Springs or something like that. And then, you know, Baptist Church. I didn't know. I thought it was just something people wanted to name. I didn't know that it had beliefs. And so when I started going to full gospel, only reason I went there was not because, I mean, if they told me they were tongue talking, I probably would have never win. Amen. Only reason that I went was to play the guitar because Brother Mike played guitar on the radio. I was selfish. Mm -hmm. But God knew what he was doing. And so when I testified to that little guitar, God used that guitar to bring me in. He did. Yep. He snuck me into a full gospel church and let me hear the power of God. And I, when I say snuck, he snuck me in there because he knew I wasn't going any other kind of way. Mama done told me that stuff was crazy. Some of you have been taught the same thing. Now, all that stuff's nonsense. That stuff's crazy. And listen to me. There's no way God's going to ever show you any different as long as you take those teachings into the Word of God. That's it. Yeah. Come with a clear mind and say, you know what? I don't want to find out what Mama taught me. I don't want to find out what Daddy taught me. God, you teach me your Word. That's right. And you open up the Word of God with an open mind, a clear mind, and read what the Scripture has to say. And I will never forget it because I got into church. A few people my age got into church with me. I lost all my rowdy friends. Didn't have many people to hang out with. And I told my wife, you know, I done got saved. And I told her, I said, 
Let's just join this church. I believe we're going to go somewhere we need to be a part of. Let's join this church. And so they brought the little papers around. And the first thing they said on there, you got to believe you speak in tongues. And my wife had her spilled out, and I didn't. She said, I thought you said you want to join this church. I said, I can't join. She said, why not? I said, I don't believe in all that stuff. She said, what you talking about? What stuff? I said, tongues. I don't believe in that stuff. Mm -hmm. She said, I was Pentecost. I was raised up. I, I wasn't. And so it was hard for me to come to the grips of that stuff was real. You know how I came to grips? It was not Brother Mike. It was not Sister Mary. It was the Holy Ghost Himself that showed me Amen. it was real. That's Amen. right. And to me, there's no better experience than God Himself showing you that what His Word said is true. Can I get an amen? amen? But just because God showed me did not mean that I didn't fight it for a while. I sit there and I said, you know what? My wife wants to go here. I got a couple friends. They play the guitar. We'll join the church, but I don't believe it. And so God began to give me dreams, man. He began to show me. And one Wednesday night, we was in the choir. We were singing, what, about 10 or 15 people there. And all of a sudden, old lady got the Holy Ghost. And I thought she was having an epileptic seizure. She went from one side of the stage to the other. And all the hairs on my neck stood up. And I wanted to find out where the door was at. Because if it wasn't one, I was about to make one. I scared to death. I knew, though, without a shadow of a doubt, man, something's in that woman. I don't know what yet, but something's in that woman. I didn't know if it was God or the devil, but I was going to find out something. She had a supernatural power. Yep. That's right. You can't shout like that without a supernatural power. That's right. Because when she got to shout, she was the quiet, meekest woman. He talked like this. Never did get excited. But when the power of God would hit her, she would scream so loud, sound like she had two microphones. Amen. <laughs> And so, you know, I just played that off for a little while. But it was on my mind. And I began to seek God. I began to fast. I began to pray. Begin to do everything that the scripture, you know. And I, I felt like the Lord showed me something in the word of God tonight. That praying always with all prayers and supplication in the spirit tonight that we're studying on comes last. So many people want to get filled with the Holy Ghost and they ain't got the righteousness yet to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Come on. Amen. The Spirit of God moves inside of you to clean you up. Some yeah. people, you know, I believe some people's got it all backwards when it comes to biblical teaching. Yes. They say, have you got the Holy Ghost? And what they really mean is, is have you been baptized in the Holy Ghost? Yeah. And some of them will say no. And some people even believe that you've got to speak in tongues and get saved. But I believe that you've got to have the Spirit of God if you're born again. Because Jesus said, no man can be born, uh, can, can be saved unless he be born by the Spirit. That's right. And because just because you have the Spirit of God doesn't mean you're filled with the Spirit of God. That's right. And that's the side trail. We won't go down that very far. But he's inside of you. And I begin to pray and I begin to seek God with all my heart. But all this tongue stuff I'm just very confused about. How could you speak with your mouth a word that you didn't understand? I had fears, maybe like some of you here tonight. I feared that I'd blaspheme the Holy Ghost. I feared that I'd say something bad. I want to take you through the scripture. The Bible says this, and I want to say this in St. Luke. I don't know the very chapter or verse, but he says this. If you being evil know how to give good gift to your children, if your child was to ask you bread, would you give him a stone? If your child was to ask you for an egg, would you give him a scorpion? And he says, you being evil know how to give good gifts. How much more would the Heavenly Father give you the Holy Spirit to those who ask? And that tells me, that brings me great peace tonight, Sister Kathy. That if I ask God for the Holy Ghost, He's not going to give me a devil. There's no way you can go wrong if you're sincere in your heart. I was going somebody shout out. then he's not going to let me blaspheme the Holy Ghost. He's yes, not going to do it. No, That's what his word says, and I believe his word. Amen. But I will say this, taking you back to the phrase of a lot of people get it wrong by saying that the Spirit of the Lord gave the utterance. That's not what it says. Go back and look. The Bible said they spake with tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. That's right. Just like the Spirit of God right now is giving me utterance to preach, yeah. He's going to give you utterance to pray in tongues. That's right. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. 
Bless he's not going to do it for you no more than he's going to preach for me tonight. Right. He's yeah. giving me that gift. He's giving me that talent. And it's up to me to get behind this pulpit. And sometimes I don't feel like a preacher. Sometimes I don't feel a morning. But how many knows we're not walking by feelings? We're walking by faith. And yeah. we got to do it. Praise God. Amen. So tonight, be encouraged when you begin to go in. Man, I, I'm telling you, I've had too many messages here lately. On the power of God, bringing the glory home. Mm -hmm. People are not getting rooted in church. Yes. Wow. Some people you have to beg them to come to church. They got every excuse. Man, I'm telling you, if you can just press through to this power, yes. not only will you make it to church, you'll make it to your prayer closet. Yes. It'll be yes. fun to go and pray because you never know. He might pour it out this morning. Yes. He might pour it out tonight. You'll become a Holy Ghost of Holy. Yes. Every time you go, you'll be looking for the glory. Yes. Oh, God. Like, 
If you was on the phone with your best friends, you could think of a million things to say, but now you're in the presence of God, That's right. and you ain't got nothing to say. Anybody in my own yes. house? Yes. 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 How many knows the desire of great leads in? Mm -hmm. You begin to think of other things that you could be doing. That's Amen. right. Amen. Amen. I believe that is the battle with the flesh. Yes. To be carnally minded is death. Amen. We don't give up. And you know, sometimes I feel like when them quiet times come, when you're in prayer, and you can't think of the word to say, maybe that's the Lord saying, let me talk. That's right. Yeah. Have you ever thought about that? Amen. If we get honest with ourselves tonight, when we talk to other people, none of us likes talking to anybody that won't let us talk back. It's rude, it's disrespectful, and it's irritating when you can't get a word in edgeways from somebody. Amen. Conversation is two-way. That's right. Amen. Amen. And so God says sometimes when your thoughts lead your mind, I'm helping you to pray. Amen. You say, how do you help? And sometimes Satan will jump on your case then because you're not religious because you're not speaking a bunch of words. And how many knows Jesus said it's not the multitudes you word you. It's not the vain repetitions that you make. It's not the pretend long prayers that you make. But it's the prayer that comes from the heart. The Holy Ghost is such in the heart. And he knows that the man of the Spirit. Man, if I could get that through my thick head as a young preacher. So many times I think the multitude of words set behind the pulpit is the answer. It's the quality of words and searching the heart. Because he knows what y'all need more than I do. And it's not about a bunch of words, but it's being in tune with heaven. That's right. And I believe the power of preaching comes from the power of prayer. That's right. Because as I begin to hear God in my prayer closet, then I begin to hear God from the pulpit. Amen. Praying in the Holy Ghost doesn't only go one way of talking. It goes two ways because he says, go on and read. Let's go back to uh, it's in this chapter. Anyhow, he tells us that praying in tongues edify ourselves. It edifies us. Yes. But he also says that we need to pray for the interpretation. Yeah. And sometimes it doesn't have to be the exact words as much as it is a subject that we're praying about. Yeah. Because as is a subject now, when it comes to experience, I just got to give you my testimonies. I remember the first time I felt the power of God. My jaws began to tremble and shake. And I felt this, I don't know, something right up in here just felt like, can I say vomit and not make you sick? It was like uh, something about to bust out of me. I can't explain it. But it just felt like I, I how many's ever, all right, let me get to this illustration. How many's ever been so hot under the collar, somebody ticked you off so bad you just felt like you had to say something? Your top was about to blow. Anybody Amen. ever been there? Amen. Amen. It's bad when you got to get that kind of illustration to get your attention. But, man, it's just like you got to say something. That's the way it felt when the power of God hit me in the road one night. First time I ever really felt the power of God strong. And that's the strongest I've ever felt the power of God. But it scared me so bad. And, and I just had this, this, this terminology in my mind that it wasn't nothing to all this stuff. So I would not let him fill me with the Holy Ghost that night. And God will prepare you for the feeling of the Holy Ghost. But I will say this tonight, that, you know, the more you seek God, the more He's going to uh, deal with your heart. And it may be little by little. Yeah. But when you least expect it, when the power of God comes, that is the time to begin to speak with tongues. It's not the time somebody yeah. take you in the back room and jack your jaws back and forth. But when the power of God hits you, when you turn loose, I'm telling you, it'll be real.
can't explain it. It's so real that I'm worshiping with my eyes closed, walking in a room, and I don't even know where I'm going, but just so intimate in worship as the Spirit of God's feeling me. But immediately, when the Spirit of God, I'm not going to say He left, but y'all know what I'm talking about. When that outpouring seems to start ceasing, you come back down to earth, the enemy comes in and begins to talk to you. That wasn't nothing. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. Wasn't nothing to all that. That's right. And so I begin to battle in my mind. And, and this, is, this is where I'm trying to go with this tonight. Because the scripture said in Ephesians chapter 6, praying always. Somebody say always. Always. What I can't understand is, and I don't know that spiritual things are to be understood, as long as they're biblical, that's all that matters. Is that when that outpouring happens, I can pray in the Holy Ghost and I don't have a doubt one that I'm praying in the Holy Ghost. That's right. Amen. Sister Pat, that ain't what God told me to do. He didn't tell me to pray when I felt that uh, auction come on me. That ain't what he said. He didn't say when the outpouring comes, uh, pray in the Holy Ghost. That ain't what he said. Is he said pray always. always. Yeah. And so I got in my room one night after I knew that I had felt the power of God. I had been baptized in the Holy Ghost. I got in my room one night time. I said, okay, God, just me and you. Nobody's here. Why come I can't speak in tongues no more? <laughs> I could. I said, when your power was manifested, I could pray and I knew it. It was a beautiful language. I, I knew I didn't learn it. I knew I couldn't speak. I said, but why now? Why? Why? Because the Old Testament, you came and left. You came and left. You came and left. But the New Testament, your word says that you came to stay. You came to inhabit us. Yeah. And I begin to hear the Lord say, begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. I'm like, I can't, Lord. I can't feel, feel your presence. And so, I prayed that night. I don't know how long, but I was by myself. And I begin to say, God, if this is your will for me to pray in the Holy Ghost without feeling something, you're going to have to do it. I'll give you my tongue, but you're going to have to do it because I can't do it. It sounds like a bunch of jibber-jabbers. Mm -hmm. And I want to let you know tongues is not a bunch of jibber-jabbers. No, tongues not. is a language. Yes, yes, it is. It's a heavenly language. Yes, it is. But that night, with my earnest heart as a child, I opened up my mouth and I began to praise him in my own spirit. Ain't that what Paul said? Yeah. I will praise him with my understanding and I will pray in the spirit. And that night, as I began to pray, just by myself, man, some of the beautiful language started coming to me. And that's what God began to tell me. If you want your ministry to be powerful, you need to be praying in the Spirit of God. Yeah, if you want your life to be fruitful in the Spirit, you need Let to begin to pray in the Spirit Let of God. And some of you here tonight and say, Brother Brandon, I don't know how to pray in the Spirit of God. I'm trying to tell you my experience that if you get along with God in the secret right, place and say, Oh God, I give you my heart time. Understand where you're coming from. I like it when I feel something. Yeah. But I can't wait. Do you know how empty the church will be tonight if I wait till I felt something every time I get ready to preach? Amen. Who would have nobody here? There's nobody to be preaching. That's every, right. The Bible said that the, the preaching of the word saves the people. That's right. I don't feel something every time I preach. That's right. I wish I did. Mm -hmm. But there are times like Sunday at the altar call, power of God begin to flood my heart. I, I can feel that. I think God's looking for a people that can walk by faith, that don't have to yeah. be spoiled and have to feel something. That's right. Oh, yeah. That's Come on. Right. Well, I'm going to pray for the sick when I feel the power of God. What scripture is that? Uh -uh. There ain't no scripture. That's what we've come up with. We've become a feeling type people. We go to church right. if we feel like it. We stay home if we feel like it. We, 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 we talk nice for our life if we feel like it. We go off on them if we feel like it. We don't walk by feelings, church. The just shall walk by faith. They shall live by faith. They shall preach by faith. They shall pray by faith. They ought to worship by faith. I ain't got to feel something to lift up my hands. The word of God said it back my hands. All ye people, I ain't going to let it shout right now. I'm going to leave him a praise on praise. He ain't done nothing tonight, but he's already done Thank you, Lord. I'm telling you, you will never have experience with God until you make the first one. Right. Secondly, 
move. I'm sorry. He's already made the first move. That's right. He left heaven to come to hell junior. Yeah. Amen. Let's just put it that way. Because that's about what it is. Uh -huh. It's the place. It's the stop before you get to hell. Uh -huh. A lot of people say we're going through hell. We ain't seen hell yet. Uh -huh. No, sir. But he left that fine place, y'all, to come here. Right. He's made the first move. It's like checkers, baby. Yeah. It's your move. Mm -hmm. Amen. He's not going to make another one until you move. That's right. Without faith. Look at all. Go back to the 11th chapter of Hebrews and look what all was accomplished through the little word faith. That's right. It didn't take a lot, maybe. Did it? Just a little bit. Somebody say, a little dab. A little dab. Yeah. It'll do you. It'll do you. Amen. So tonight, that is a a spiritual armor that we need to begin to put on the church. Learn to hear from God. That's right. Learn to pray in the Spirit. That's right. Notice what he said. Pray in all ways with all prayers and supplication in the Spirit. Watching there too. There you go. Listen. Watching. It don't have to always be talking. Don't let Satan rob you of a true walk with God when you get to your prayer closet and you ain't got nothing to say. That's okay. The Spirit's helping you to pray. Tell him to get off your back. Spirit's right. got me. If you truly want to be there and you've been truly led to prayer by God, he's got you. You yes. don't have to be Mr. Motormouth. Amen. Right. Right. Because God can speak just a couple words, man. Right. Peace be still. Woo. Come on. That's right. Those three words. Peace yeah. be still. Amen. How many knows we need to speak to the yeah. things that are going on in our life right now? Yeah. Peace be still. We don't have to have a whole walk of two words. Just yeah. peace be still. Praise yeah. God. Amen. If we speak that with the anointing, the same anointing Jesus spoke with, it's not going to happen. How did he get that anointing? It was not the multitude of words. It was the multitude of hours that he spent with the Lord. He'd rise up early in the morning. And I don't know what he was saying on that mountain, but all he was doing was communion with his father. I want to tell you tonight, God is madly in love with each and every one of us in this yes, sanctuary tonight. And he wants you to have a time that you can set aside to meet with him every Amen. day. Come on, somebody. Yes, that you right, can God. commune with him. Amen. Amen. That he can pour into you. That you can pour out of you into somebody else's life. Amen. But this Holy Ghost prayer, it's for you. Mm -hmm. yes, it is. If you are a believer tonight in the Lord Jesus Christ, but you don't have a prayer language, you're living under God's best for your life. That's right. Wow. And I don't say that to condemn you. I say that to challenge you to seek God for more. People are not seeking for the Holy Ghost more. They get water baptized, and that's it. That's right. They live. They you know, want no more. I've been to the river. Bless the Lord. All my sins are washed away. Calvary didn't stop there. He said, go to the upper room. Tear it. I've got another power from on high that's going to fill you. And no, you're not always going to understand him. But there's going to be some times in your life when you don't know how to pray. I remember just the other day, I'm a very bashful type person to pray in the Holy Ghost. If you hear me praying in the Holy Ghost, you can know without a shadow of a doubt the power of God moving in this place. Yeah. I, don't, I, I don't know, but when I pray in the Holy Ghost, that's like intimacy. I like to be alone when I do that. I like to be me and God. Well, it's not that I'm ashamed of God. I can recall one time, and, and you know, I, I, matter of fact, the Word of God says we shouldn't do it in public settings unless it's interpreted interpreter around, yeah. or unless we do it quietly and to listen to God. It should never be an interrupt service. Yeah. Now, we can have the good gifts, and that doesn't mean we blast in the Holy Ghost. We can just be too young, not know when to use it, when not to use it. Yeah. When people begin to say, well, I just can't control it, then you have a devil or something, because the Spirit of God can always be controlled. He only moves as you yield to Him. That's yeah. right. Amen. 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 So people say, well, I just can't hold it back. That's not, that's not the Holy Ghost of the Word of God. He's a gentleman. He's never going to come in and make you do anything. Uh, yeah. He works with you as you yield to him. That's right. And I say that to say this because a lot of times I don't yield enough. That's right. I got filled with the Holy Ghost right after I began to preach. And I was called to preach at a church in uh, Mississippi. It was a Baptist church. I knew it was a Baptist church before I went. 
Some people begin to say automatically, oh, well, he's already backsliding out of But God didn't preach, didn't call me to preach to a single God church. He called me to preach. That's right. That, that don't, it don't matter where the door's open, I'm going. Amen. I don't care what's written on, the, right. on, on the name of the church. Bless him, God. But I went to that church and it, it became a revival. And uh, one Sunday morning, I was preaching. It was like one of the, uh, it may not have been revival, it may have been Mother's Day or something. Anyhow, I was preaching. One Sunday morning, and the power of God fell, and there was a young man and a woman came up to the altars. And uh, I've already given this testimony before, but the power of God hit me, and I had just freshly got filled with the Spirit of God. I knew when the Spirit of God was coming to, to fill me again, and my jaws began to tremble in that little church, and I began to say inside, God, you can't do that here. You can't do this here. This is, <laughs> oh, God, they don't like that stuff here. Stop. I mean, literally, I was grieving the Spirit of God. I mean, he was just, just overfilled, man. You know what I'm talking about. He was just bubbling over like, no, Lord, not now. Wait till I get in the truck. Wait till I get home. And, uh, but that, that young man was crying rivers of tears. And, man, God was all in it because he was on house arrest. And it was past his time that God worked it out because he was in church. And he was at God's will, in God's will at that altar. But I will never forget when I got out of that truck. And I left that service, man. Everybody was pumped up. The Spirit of God hadn't moved in that little church in years. And uh, I got back in that truck. I felt like I was, I had done something, you know. The power of God had used me. And I will never forget the Spirit of the Lord spoke in my heart when I shut that door. He, he was mad with me. How many knows God can get mad with us? Yes, he can. He was hurt. I had hurt God. That's right. God spoke in my heart. And when he spoke, I knew he was hurt because he hurt me. He asked me, he said, do you think you can pray better than I can? And my heart crushed because I quenched the spirit. I don't know what he wanted to pray. I don't know. And how many knows he knows better how to pray than we do? We need to let him take over when he comes down the altar call. So I want to say that tonight. When the spirit of God's prompting you to pray for something, I've only been woke up one time. Many people have this testimony. I don't. But I've been woke up one time, and I'm very disappointed in the way it went because, I don't know, but I was sleeping one night, and all of a sudden I was woke out of a sleep with one person on my mind. I was in church at that time. And I'm going to tell you something, you know, losing sleep, I'm not a fan of that. I like to sleep. And so when, <laughs> it's kind of it's kind of funny because when the Lord woke me up, laid that person on my mind, the Lord would listen. <laughs> I rolled over and right back to sleep. It wasn't long like the Lord just slapped me and bumped me and get up. I'm like, Lord, what is it? What's wrong with these folks? You know? And so I said, pray. And I knew then I had to get up. And I ain't going to need the knee type, but I had to get up out of that bed. Or I lay in that bed, I'll be right back. <laughs> you know, so I've been on my knees and God began to wake me up. He began to burn my heart. I mean, he's ever had a bird for somebody just yeah. to pray. And I began to pray, but it didn't go the way I wanted to go. That person backslid, man, they're still out there in the world today. So I don't know why God woke me up. But you don't have to always, that's, that's the point that I'm trying to make. You do not always have to know what God's praying through you. Just know you pray till you don't feel that bird no more. The old timers would call that praying through. And you leave the rest to God because God knows how to pray. He knows when to pray. He knows what to say. Amen. And that is a weapon of ours tonight, church. That he wants us to use. Don't be equipped with all of the armor and say, I don't leave all that tongue talking to you, preacher. <laughs> You're missing out on God's best thing. Right. Right. And, it's you, and it's you. It's, you can't blame nobody else. Mm -hmm. It's you. Right. And if you're skeptical, I fully understand. But I just want to ask you something. Will you try? Hold her. Will yeah. you try to see for the Holy Ghost? Say, God. Tell him, tell him. He already knows how you feel about him anyhow. Yeah, just tell him, say, Lord, I, and I don't know about all that tongue stuff. What's the word say about tongue stuff? That's right. That's the truth. They all shall speak with your tongues. First Corinthians chapter 14, if you keep on reading that, the very last mm -hmm. verse of it, he yeah. said, forbid not to speak with tongues. In other words, don't stop speaking with tongues. That's right. Matter of fact, Paul in that same chapter, rather, a lot of people think, you know, where he says, do all speak with tongues, you know. In that very same chapter, Paul said, I think it's verse 5, he said, I would that you all speak with tongues. That's right. God wants you to have a prayer language. I'm saying this in my clothing just the other night. 
My wife was talking about it. I testified about it last Monday, I think it was. My son had some type of allergic reaction to medicine, I suppose. That was back before we, that's been a couple months ago now, probably. But he just woke up one morning. He was okay. And then as he got a drink of water, he started feeling funny. He went back to bed, and before he could make it to bed, he collapsed. And we caught him just before he hit the floor. And I thank God for the Holy Ghost. Yes. Because immediately, man, I began to pray in tongues. I laid my hand on, and I'm not, I'm not, my wife can tell you, I don't do stuff like that. Unless I'm by myself. I don't know. It's just an intimate thing to me when you do things like that. Um, but when God moves upon you, that's the time you need to do it. You need to obey God. And I began to pray in the Holy Ghost. And his color came back. He began to be, as a matter of fact, I think he was better before he ever got to the hospital. We took him anyhow just to try to figure out what went wrong. I don't know that we still know today. But thank God he's not had none of the problems no more. I said that to say this. You may feel awkward wherever God chooses to feel you at. Mm -hmm. He may choose to feel you in the middle of your job. Mm -hmm. I've, I've been there, man. The old, old, old shop we used to work in over behind Full Gospel Net Drill Press. I'd be sitting there singing a song, and all of a sudden, pow, God hit me. Oh, Everybody's right. around me. Tears start flowing. What you going to do? You've been asking him to feel you, and you're like, not now, Lord. That's a heavenly place in Christ Jesus. We've been called to sit together. Father, by faith tonight, we're not shouting. We're not running. We're waiting. We're waiting on you, Lord. It's not how loud I shout. It's not how many words I say. It's about being led by the Spirit of God into the throne of you. Would you do that for all of us in here tonight? Especially these new ones that have just got in and made their hearts are hungry. Bless them tonight for putting their keys in their ignition. Maybe they got to go to work in the morning, but they come out tonight to hear your word. 
And Father, I pray I can't do it, but I pray tonight that you would manifest your power right now in this sanctuary where we're at. Do it for your people. Show us what we need to do. Teach us, God, as children. Because I have noticed over the years that it don't, it don't happen the same way every time. Somebody may have a song. Somebody may have a testimony. Somebody may have a word. Sometimes at the house I can be listening to a song. Sometimes I can just have a thought in my mind. But Lord, the Bible says many be led by the Spirit. By the sons of God. Lead us tonight, the Holy Spirit, to the presence of the Almighty. Lord, we cry crying our heart out of love. Spirit of adoption sent it into us to help us to pray, Holy Ghost. Lift up your hands tonight, church. That's what his word said. Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. There's nothing left. 